All right, guys, what's up? Coach Joe here at Elite FTS, one of my favorite spots to be at with Dave Tate, needs no introduction. And I wanted to talk to Dave about conditioning and how we can kind of make it more popular, I would say. I've been listening to podcasts a lot. You have guys who are coming on speaking more about the topic. I saw a poll the other day, and it was how many of you have done your conditioning? And I think it was 70% said they didn't, and mm -hmm. then 30% said they did. Uh, but I'm getting back into strongman, kind of have a new outlook on training. You know, I always like to reflect. There are no better guy than him right here to kind of give me some feedback. We can bounce ideas back and forth on what would be a smart way to do it. You know, is it easier than people think or make it out to be? I just want to get your thoughts on the whole topic because I'm in it for just trying to increase, like I said, my my benefits of it to for training and longevity at the same time. All right, so it's a broad word. Right. Like conditioning is a broad word because we can go from EMOMs, right, mm -hmm. at, the, at the very high end, you know, to just steady state cardio. So that, that's, there's a lot that's in there. For sure. Okay. So for for what you're talking about, trying to get back into strongman, and I've not trained strongman, but I've consulted mm -hmm. kind of like what we're doing here with strongman in regards to all that. So if it, if it is strongman and that's the demographic, then I would look at those EMOMs and then ask you, how long do you think it takes for you to peak for right. that? So if I'm working with a sprinter trying to increase their 40 or their 10, you, know, you can put them on sprinting protocols and all this different thing, and they can go from basically zero to hero in about six weeks. Okay. And then after that, it gets really, really hard mm -hmm. to be able to get it up a little bit more. <clears throat> so. In the off season, sometimes it makes sense to take that out and build strength. So then when they come back to that point again, they're stronger at that base when they go to push that. Right. So if you get into the EMOMs, which is every minute on minute, if you, I'm sure your people know, right? So when you get, <laughs> you would hope so, right? <laughs> so when you get back into that, if you're stronger than you were before, mm -hmm. it's gonna be, it's still gonna suck when you start, right? right. But you're gonna start at a stronger base and then end up at a higher base from that versus if you did those all year round mm -hmm. that's not really going right. to be the case and that can take away maybe from the strength side of things if we're yes. focusing too much on the conditioning yes so that's if you're at this big end like mm -hmm. here's that high-end conditioning which i don't even really i don't call that conditioning mm -hmm. i call that sport preparation because right. it's more spp mm -hmm. than it would be like a gpp mm -hmm. Now, if you're dealing with a GPP, that's what's starting to become more popular for rightfully so, because people just stop. There's, there's two camps. There's people that only circuit train mm -hmm. and they kind of come from the CrossFit background. Everything you do is a circuit, circuit, circuit. And they're not able to really get stronger. They're not able to build muscle because that's really all they're doing. There's not enough rest in between right. for them to be able to do. They're trying to do two things at once. Mm -hmm. It has its place somewhere. You know, I don't really I don't use them so I don't I, I can't figure out where I would put that right. or something like that unless it's a mom or something specific mm -hmm. there so there was that camp that was doing too much and then on the other side it's no I'm not doing any cardio because if I do cardio it's going to suck my gains you know I fell into that camp mm -hmm. like no I can't go to the mall I can't go to the park I got to squat tomorrow it's going right. to fuck my squat all right. Right. right and that's that that's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, what ends up happening is when you don't do anything, your base level of conditioning, it's, it deconditions. I mean, this is why we have periodization, right? So everything's going to have its phase. Then when you go through the phase, how long will that phase last? Mm -hmm. Right? So having in just basic general conditioning, if they don't have anything at five minutes, you know, after every training session on off days or whatever it is, it's going to help move nutrients, blood flow. You can't recover if you can't have nutrients going to the muscles to be able to help it recover. So there you're just talking very, very general steady state cardio. Mm -hmm. I don't like to use zone one, zone two, zone three. A lot of people kind of get mixed up in all that. I think that becomes a little convoluted, especially in today's world, because a lot of people are on medications that are controlling things like that. Right. So they get very confused because they don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. So if it's just very basic steady state you can have a conversation while you're doing it right that mid-range is going to be a little bit harder to have a conversation you might be able to go two three sentences out mm -hmm. then stop <laughs> then have a few more sentences and then that other state you're not going to be able to have that that steady state i think is what needs to be implemented just for the recovery purposes and when you talk about steady state for someone for gpp purposes do you have a kind of a plan for that how many days a week for how long at what uh, what point 
would that maybe mess up a workout or do people overthink it and that's kind of what holds them back from even doing it? I think they overthink okay. it. I mean, we're not talking a lot. I mean, if you're talking five or 10 minutes of walking, now, now, let me step back. If you're talking somebody that's done zero, mm -hmm. like 10 minutes of it is going to be too much. They're going to hate it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to be compliant. So if you're going to like ground zero, if you're talking five minutes of steady state cardio before their training or after their training, if that fucks their training up, then they have way bigger issues going on right. than the cardio that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's real need, no optimal time where it should fall. And I hate to put that out there because if you say the most optimal time is going to be the day after training, mm -hmm. that's another thing that they have to schedule right. that they'll probably skip because they haven't been doing it to begin with. So I'll start with, where does this fit best for you? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's in the middle of the fucking session. If you do your main things first, you know how a, a, a training day lays out, right? You got your main stuff, then it goes into like secondary mm -hmm. and then stuff you don't even know why you're doing. If you did it like right after the main stuff, yeah, people are gonna criticize me and say, oh, that's terrible, but we're trying to build a habit. So if that's when it can best be utilized and put in there, put it in there. Mm -hmm. When it gets over 10, 15 minutes, then yeah, maybe move it to the end or move it to a different different time. But optimal is, optimal very many times can be the enemy of, pro, of progression. Because mm -hmm. everybody wants optimal, but they're not progressing. Optimal for some people is just doing it. Now, if I was to say where I would like to see it, say if it were you mm -hmm. and it was for, recovery, blood flow, and all the other stuff. Yes, on the off day, mm -hmm. you know, and what means whatever you, whatever you right. do. I mean, right. it can be a bike, it can be a treadmill, it can be walking. You no, know, this would be in addition to, I do count steps. I do think people should look at their steps. This is not steps. Mm -hmm. This is steady. Yeah, right, the right. steps can be different throughout that whole period. It can be 8,000 steps. But at no point in time was it more than four minutes at a, right. at a shot. Right. It can be walking. It can be any of those different things. It, it can go in there. It's just developing the habit for somebody that doesn't do it is the first problem. That's probably a bigger problem than the person that's been avoiding it because they think it's going to hurt their gains. Because mm -hmm. as soon as they start doing it and they start seeing that their recovery becomes better, then they're, they're going to want to overdo it. Right. Then that can right. be a problem there. And, and often, I mean, obviously it's, it's an excuse, but people don't want to do the stereotypical treadmill, bike, like when you think of just cardio or stay state cardio. So what are some other maybe ideas that you've used or you would get those people doing instead of that, that maybe just makes it more, uh, or makes them more interested in it? Well, that becomes tricky too, because what we're looking for is just that blood flow, mm -hmm. right? So if, if I tell somebody that's a meathead that sled drags and stuff like that, then the next thing you know, everything, it's, it's, it's not completely all anaerobic, but now they're doing heavy fucking sled right. drags. And, and now that becomes something that they need to recover, recover from, from instead right. of something that's helping their recovery. If it's somebody that I know understands training, mm -hmm. and then I would put in, if it is that second day, light sled drags, very light, like a quarter or a plate if it was you, and then, you know, forward drags, backward drags, mm -hmm. you know, and with each step being intentional to try to feel the muscle stretch. Mm -hmm. So you're basically getting active recovery with that. But then upper body work, you know, from a pushing and a rear delt, because all that is concentric only. Right. So if I'm walking, doing tricep extensions, there's no weight on, the, mm -hmm. on that. So you can go through a couple different passes, you know, forward, forward, backward, backward, front raise, front raise, rear raise, rear raise and whatever else you want to come up with pull through pull mm -hmm. through and now you got 15 minutes right you know so that works and i would prefer that mm -hmm. right because now you're starting to get that active stretching and stuff like that that goes in with that but it also becomes that deterrent of why well, i don't have a sled right right you know i can't do this i can't do that mm -hmm. so yeah it varies now say you have someone who's more intermediate, advanced, sports specific, say strongman or powerlifting per se. I know they're a little bit different, but how would that change your mindset when you're working with that athlete when it comes to conditioning purposes? Not like the just getting someone started beginner, like we talked about, but now we're, we have to be more precise with what we're doing. How, how would your brain work with something like that? Well, what is the, what is the, what is the training cycle look like? Hmm getting away from whenever the 
the competition or show is. What, what, it, what does that hypertrophy phase look like? Right. like <clears throat> what, what's the goal of that hypertrophy phase? There's a lot of things that can go on in there because just increasing the volume still having enough rest between sets but increasing that volume can take care of a lot of that conditioning too mm -hmm. right because you're not resting 10 minutes between sets or so forth you're resting right. enough to be able to recover but a little bit less mm -hmm. you know so then that volume over a period of time doesn't really require that same with you know if, if you were to compare say meadows had a high volume mm -hmm. style of training versus you know high in effort i don't like the high intense but high effort like one set the failure type thing you're dealing with a 20 minute session to a two hour session which one has the higher calorie expenditure right you know from a conditioning benefit for an athlete for a conditioning benefit which one's going to have the higher conditioning benefit mm -hmm. you know there's pros and cons of each type so that i want to know first like what's that look like right because that can be mitigated you know if you want the five minute rest periods because you want to make sure you're super strong on every single thing that you do then there's probably going to be more of that steady state mm -hmm. that's going to go in there as you start to come down into whenever the show's going to be and then you look at things like the emoms you got to know the events right? Right, right so i mean you can do emoms for you know overhead logs but then that's not what they're doing they're doing a max log mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. then you just what the fuck yeah you know so you got to be right. specific that's where i get that's where i get it I guess that's where I'm getting at is right you, with with powerlifting. Okay, you know it's going to be a max for, for squat yeah. bench day. With strongman, now we have to factor in how long's the event, yes. what type of event, and then and when you know exactly, and then how do we adjust that conditioning and when to adjust that conditioning for that show? And I guess there obviously the variables change. I'm just wondering like what goes through your head? Like are, are we doing more sprint type emoms type of deal for strongman specifics versus? Yeah, and we're taking out that GPP, lower steady state stuff, since we're getting closer to the depends, show. Depends, depends. So it's, the first thing I'd want to know is what, where, where is your baseline, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have a baseline, it's going to have to start a little bit sooner, and you're just going to have to expect that there's probably going to be something there, right. right? And then you're going to put in some kind of compound movement that's mechanically similar to what that mm -hmm. is, lighter, just to be able to have that base hopefully that base is there. Mm -hmm. So by the time you know what the event is, which hopefully it's six, seven weeks out, hopefully, then you have enough time to be able to build from that. Remember the six, seven weeks I was talking about, so right, you have right. enough time yep. to be able to build from that. But if it's under that, you're gonna have to kind of build it in. Mm -hmm. I would prefer something that's mechanically similar, not exactly similar, because you're trying to work that just a little bit to bring it up to just that base. Then once you start going into that, because now that becomes something on top of everything else that you're doing, that it just increased your recovery demands. Right. So now that that goes back up like that, I would look at whatever that GPP work is and then potentially pivot that. Mm -hmm. So steps, no, I would keep that the same. But if it's, you know, 20 minutes of an Aerodyne bike or some shit like that, that may get pulled out and then it would go to let's go with some concentric only sled work on the areas where you tend to get the most sore gotcha. and use it more for recovery than for conditioning. Right. And are you a fan of using, say something sports specific for the conditioning? So if it is strongman per se, like taking an implement and working like an EMOM type of deal and counting that as conditioning, or would you keep it separate as like traditional, some sort of sprint work with either body weight or like you said, like a sled or something like that. Like, do you think that can be done? If your technique is good. Okay. Like if your technique is good, yes. If your technique is not so good, then I, I begin, I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of technique, technique right, sure. for everything. So <laughs> yeah. if that can become something that's going to produce non-optimal reps mm -hmm. and reinforce bad technique, which it can, because you're going every minute on the minute. You right. Know? So if there's, X number of repetitions that's done in that time, but 60% of them were performed inefficiently, mm -hmm. then no, because mm -hmm. then technique has to right. trump everything. The reason I say that just because I have associated EMOMs, I think CrossFit popularized that. And then you look at CrossFit, what an EMOM is, and maybe people who hear that, they're like, oh, I'm going to do some cleans, you know, and then another type of movement. But I think to your point, if the technique isn't there, then you could actually be hurting your progress. Oh, big time. For strong and big time. Right, exactly. So I just wanted the, the listeners to kind of get that grasp. Like if we're saying EMOM, that doesn't mean just go balls to the walls with barbell cleans or some sort of barbell complex. You're probably better off, you know, 
doing a different movement where it still gives you the same benefit, it's not going to hinder your performance for the yeah. actual competition. You know, it, it becomes it becomes really 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 tricky too because if if that's what you're using with that, then everything becomes here's how many reps I have to get every minute on the minute. Right. And then the mindset goes to reps instead of technique. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing with hypertrophy in a way. So they start training for the reps mm -hmm. instead of the technique, where the sport is technique, right? So even say if it's, the better example would be if you're training for hypertrophy and failure is something that you're working toward. You know, forget the debate, good, bad, whatever. Let's just say right. that's something that you're working for. and in that this effective repetition thing is is true is mm -hmm. is the thing and is everything which i don't think it's everything but it definitely plays a certain part of that if you're doing barbell curls and you're strict and you're starting at a full range of motion and you're not starting with momentum you're isometrically contracting flexing mm -hmm. and you're going through that then about four or five it starts to get hard now to me you're starting to hit that effective rep range mm -hmm. so you lean into that because then now five is hard, six is harder, seven yeah. might, might not be done. But because your paper said 10, you start cheating when it starts to right. feel hard. And so basically you just kick the can down the road, mm -hmm. right? So then it ends up being something different than what it was. That take that same thing and then you look at that as far as technique, if it's on an EMOP, like, okay, okay, now I have to get five reps on the minute every minute, right? right. right? So now it's all about the reps. So now the brain mm -hmm. for a lot of athletes only the very high end ones are gonna get what they're supposed to do, are gonna say, I have to get five. Mm -hmm. Coach says I have to get five, it has to get five. If I don't get five, then I'm a wimp. If I don't get five, then I'm a quitter. If I don't get five, then I didn't try hard. Right. Because they don't know what the actual real objective and goal is. Mm -hmm. And it's the technique, you know, to be able to display it at the show. That can be, that should be like noted as a learning experience on that day, use less weight next time. <laughs> Right, which goes against what everybody wants yeah, to do, yeah. but here's where we're trying to end up. Yeah, I, I just see that easily with your example of like sled work, where you have guys who maybe start with a quarter or something like that, and then before you know it, they got four plates on the sled and they're like, oh, I'm conditioning. I'm like, well, now you're recovered. They're conditioning, you, yeah, you're different, conditioning, but you know? yeah, that, that's, you're, you're having a different stimulus now than what was in, originally intended, and you may have to recover more because in your head, you're like, oh, I'm just going to add another plate. I'm going to add yeah, another plate, yeah. plate. And it can be the same thing, like you said, with doing a barbell complex that should be at like 95 pounds for some athletes, and then they bump it up 135. And then you, you have in their head, okay, I need to hit this many reps, just like you said. And now it's like, well, we're using this to condition and, and potentially recover, get nutrients to the muscle so you can train and focus on the big thing. But now we see a decrease in performance because – you're, you're doing too yeah. much or, or too hard. You shouldn't have to recover from your recovery work. Yeah. It makes no sense, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, but I don't think a lot of people get that. For sure. You know, because it's that, you know, what's training hard, what's not training. Which is funny, right? Because they'll train really hard on the things like that, which they don't need to train hard on, but they don't know how to train hard on the things that they should train hard on. <laughs> you know, which is, it's, it's a, it's a weird-ass thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, so kind of just getting into – Strong man, I'm probably going to, I've been working on my GPP base now. Uh, the show's in November. So for me, coming off of a hypertrophy block, going into strength block, I'm gonna start throwing in a couple EMOMs here and there, do a little bit more specific work uh, for that competition. Hopefully I've built that base, kind of like what he's saying, the base is already there. And then I can push the EMOMs to help me be able to have that work capacity or that performance increase when it gets mm -hmm. to the show in November. Uh, but I think him and I will both agree that we kind of have this, this divide of either people who just quit the cardio and they just want to focus on the strength, uh, where they're maybe doing too much cardio and not focusing enough on the strength. There's got to be that middle ground, especially if we're looking for performance increase for whatever specifically you're working for. Uh, and then also just being healthy in general. So, well, there's, so there's no negative let's say they're in a bulking phase mm -hmm. right so there's no negative to keeping 15 minutes of steady state cardio right, and right. twice a week and you might even be able to argue with there's well there's no positive it's not enough to really do anything but it's a habit mm -hmm. when you take it out it's way harder to right. re-implement right so yeah. it's it's like bulking if you're going to eat a bunch of shitty food you should still be eating the, the base of that meal it should be solid good food mm -hmm. so then when you go to have to strip the shit out right. you still have the base there you didn't completely replace it 
with all crap because now that's a big change mm -hmm. it's easier to For reduce sure. than completely change something else i see that with training all the time too maybe have some guys who hit it for a big spurt of time then they fall off and then they just stop training when if you can get that mindset of maybe i'm not going to train as hard but i just want to hit maintenance volume for a yes. little bit it's easy to because you still have the habit of training and then you can push because most people when they get back into it and they haven't trained for a while it sucks and then that discourages them from even continuing so it's the same thing with cardio where just like dave said there's not really much negatives and it's mostly it's about just keeping that habit in place so you can continue onward but just want to get his thoughts on that uh, I'm, I'm more of an advocate of cardio. I did that a couple years ago where I totally just threw cardio to the side. I regret it now. So maybe you guys can learn something. If not, that's your problem. Uh, but thanks for coming out and uh, giving us some wisdom and appreciate it, man. Thank you.